Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. You can now use the promo code LVD at checkout. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another historic deck and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon we're taking a look at a fun 5 color Maelstrom Archangel deck featuring the 5 mana 5-5 five five Mythic Rare Angel with flying and whenever the Archangel deals combat damage to a player we may cast a spell from our hand without paying its mana cost. There's a lot of expensive spells we could try and play with the Archangel, but one of the more tempting options is Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, the 10 mana 10 10 Legendary Eldrazi with Indestructible, and whenever we cast Ulamog, we can exile two target permanents. And with the Archangel, we are indeed casting a spell, not simply putting it on the battlefield, so we do get to exile two things with Ulamog. And whenever Ulamog attacks, defending player has to exile the top 20 cards of their library. So even if the opponent is chum blocking the Ceaseless Hunger, they will usually die in two or three attacks. So that's the primary game plan, try and cheat an Ulamog into play with our Maelstrom Archangel. And as a backup plan, we also have four copies of Ilharg, the Race Boar, the 5 mana 6-6 six, six Legendary Boar God with Trample. And whenever Ilharg attacks, we can put a creature card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped and attacking. And we have to return that creature to our hand at the beginning of the next end step. So if we attack with Ilharg, we could potentially sneak an Archangel into play. And then if the Archangel connects, we can once again cast a card from our hand for free. But we can also potentially just put an Ulamog in play, tapped and attacking with our Ilharg. We do miss out on the cast trigger and we also miss out on Ulamog's attack trigger. Since Ulamog is put in play, tapped and attacking, so we don't get to exile the top 20 cards. But we are still attacking with an additional 10-10 indestructible. So if the opponent can chum block, that's 10 more damage to their face. So that's also a powerful combination. But if we do have all three cards, Archangel, Ilharg and Ulamog, we can potentially live the dream of Ilharg putting Archangel in play and then casting Ulamog afterwards. And another expensive creature we can put in play with Ilharg or cast with our Archangel are two copies of Hornet Queen from Amonkhet Remastered, 7 mana, 2-2 two, two Insect with Flying and Death Touch, and when Hornet Queen enters the battlefield we get to make 4 1-1 one, one green Insect creature tokens with Flying and Death Touch. So even if the Hornet Queen is returned to our hand at the end of turn with Ilharg, we still get to keep the 4 1 1 insect tokens, so that's also a nice combination. And sometimes we can also just ramp into Hornet Queen the old fashioned way and cast a 2 2 that leaves behind a whole bunch of Death Touch tokens, which are very good at playing defense. So this is the top end of the deck. Now let's take a look at the rest of the deck. How are we casting a 5 color creature? Well, we've got a bit of mana fixing with our Paradise Druid, a 2 mana 2 1 Elf Druid with Hexproof as long as it's untapped, and we can tap it to add 1 mana of any color to our mana pool. And in a similar fashion, we have four copies of Incubation Druid, a 2 mana 0 2 Elf Druid that can tap for one mana of any type that a land we control could produce. And if the Incubation Druid has a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, instead we get to add three mana of that type instead. And for five mana, we can adapt Incubation Druid, putting three plus 1 plus 1 counters on it. And then we also have a bit of card selection with four copies of Thrill of Possibility. As an additional cost, we have to discard a card and then we get to draw two. Sometimes we end up with a few too many copies of Ulamog in our hand. And then we can just get rid of one copy in order to draw two and hopefully find the missing combo pieces. And then at 3 mana we've got a bit more ramp and mana fixing with Chromatic Lantern, adds 1 mana of any color, and then lands we control also turn into multicolor lands. And then we also have the full playset of Rhythm of the Wild, a 3 mana enchantment saying creature spells we control can be countered, and non-token creatures we control have a riot, meaning that when they enter the battlefield they either enter the battlefield with a plus 1 plus 1 counter on it, or they enter the battlefield with haste. So the plus 1 plus 1 counter is very useful with Incubation Druid, since we can potentially play Incubation Druid, it will get a counter right away, and then on the following turn it can tap for 3 mana, potentially helping us ramp out cards like Hornet Queen and Ulamog. And then the haste part of course is great with our Maelstrom Archangel, as we can potentially play the Angel on turn 4 if we go turn 2 Paradise Druid, turn 3 Rhythm of the Wild, and then attack with a hasty Archangel, putting an Ulamog in play as early as turn 4. And then in a similar fashion we also have two copies of Domri Chaosbringer, 4 mana Planeswalker that starts out with 5 loyalty, and the plus 1 ability adds a red or green mana to our mana pool, and if that mana was spent on a creature spell it gains Riot, so once again we can choose between a plus 1 counter or haste. And then the minus 3 lets us take a look at the top 4 cards of our library, and we can reveal up to 2 creature cards from among them and put them into our hand, so that's a nice way of finding or missing combo pieces like the Archangel and Ulamog. And then a minus 8 emblem can also potentially win us the game. And then we've essentially covered the rest of the deck. We've got 4 copies of Archangel, 4 Ilharg, 2 copies of Hornet Queen, and 4 copies of Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger. 
And then taking a look at the mana base, we do want to be able to hardcast Maelstrom Archangel, even if we don't draw Chromatic Lantern, so we do need quite a bit of mana fixing, which is why we're playing one of each Triome. These have all the basic land types, meaning that all the check lands will typically come into play untapped afterwards. And then looking at the dual lands, we're essentially playing all the red and or green dual lands, because if you take a look at the deck, except for the Archangel, our deck is just red and green. And then we've got one of each basic land, which can be useful against Zelda Wreckage type effects. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a pretty nice hand. Would have been even better with a 2 mana ramp creature instead of a lantern. Although lantern will help us cast the angel as well. Play the triome. And then turn 3, probably chromatic lantern. Turn 4, just play the angel. Or I could play rhythm first. Suppose I can also play Domri. We're up against goblins. And we know they have a Krenko in hand, so... Let's see if we can put this Ulamog in play before we get comboed out. Yeah, the goblins deck shouldn't have too much removal for my Archangel, so I think I'm fine just running it out there. This also gives us a blocker for the turn. And next turn we get to Ulamog, exile two of the opponent's lands. So unless they have a Skirk Prospector, they will be in trouble. And if they had a Prospector, they probably would have played it on turn one, so... It's gonna be a War Chief. Alright, so... What am I doing here? I guess we'll go Rhythm plus Paradise Root with a plus one counter on it. Hit with Archangel. And say hello to Ulamog. I guess we'll get rid of the War Chief and a land. And now there's an Ulamog in play that the opponent has to deal with. Domri can maybe go digging for another one. It's gonna be a Goblin Matron for now. What are we getting? Prospector to give them more mana for next turn. So, step one, Domri. Minus. There's another Ulamog. So we get to attack. I guess we'll leave the Paradise Root back. Trigger Ulamog, put another Ulamog in play, exile some more of the opponent's stuff. And that's how we beat goblins. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, decent hands. We just need to find a payoff to put in play with Archangel. We'll need to lead with some Petal Grove. But then turn to Mountain, turn 3 Sulphur Falls comes into play untapped. Facing Merfolk. Alright, it's been a while since we faced the Merfolk deck. So they might have a Merfolk Trickster to tap down my Archangel, that could be annoying. Otherwise I don't expect too much interaction. And of course they can also be playing Collected Company now. I'll take two. And I'll just play a Rhythm. I could tap my Paradise Druid, but then there's a chance that they can bounce it. And then next turn we should have all five colors for a hasty Archangel. And then best case scenario, we top deck an Ulamog or a Hornet Queen. It's gonna be a little sad if we need to leave the Archangel on defense, but I guess that's also an option. Another Branchwalker. Finds a Biomancer. Which goes to the graveyard. And Breeding Pool tapped. Just drew a Triome, so... Yeah, can't really attack with Archangel if I'm taking 7 on the way back. So I guess this is just a sad Archangel on defense. 
So might as well give it a counter. And then next turn maybe cycle Trium, hope to hit something. Uh, let's see if they have a collected company. It's gonna be Silver Gull revealing Trickster, which can tap down my Archangel here. Or they could do it in my turn, but they're gonna do it aggressively now. So, it's gonna be difficult to survive this. We're at five. Although there's Ulamog. Can Ulamog save us? Uh, might as well still cycle Triome. Hornet Queen would actually be better than Ulamog in this spot. Find a swamp. So I can attack with Archangel. Exile two things. I'll have two blockers, so technically I'm still alive. Typically it's better to go after the opponent's lands with Ulamog, but in this case we have to go after the creatures. And then get rid of the bigger ones, I guess. And then I can't really afford to tap my Paradise Druid here. So even if they have a Lord, I'm not dead on board. And there's a Mistbinder. And a Trickster to tap down Ulamog. Alright, that'll kill me. GG's. Yeah, if we drew the Ulamog one turn sooner, we probably win this game, as we can get Ulamog down a turn sooner. And I also decided to take two additional damage by keeping the Paradise Root untapped, so I maybe could have saved myself two damage in the process too, if I didn't want to play it safe there, but uh, yeah, still a good game. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent hand. No way to give the Archangel haste, but at least we'll be able to cast it. Turn to Paradise Druid, looking good. Facing a red green deck with Crash Through, so it could be a Kiln Fiend deck. Kiln Fiend means we could just be dead next turn. But um, hopefully, we're not. It's gonna be a Ryle, so it gains Trample. They probably have like an Infuriate here, so blocking wouldn't even result in a trade. Theoretically, I'm okay trading Kiln Fiend for Druid, because Kiln Fiend's next turn could just threaten lethal. Yeah, let's just block. Alright, no Infuriate, that's good. And then we'll just play Incubation Druid. Still missing white mana to cast Angel. So that could be a concern. And looks like they had a shock. Alright, so it's gonna be a bit of a slower game. Unless they have another Kill Fiend, which they do. So I'll thrill, probably discarding one Angel. Or I could discard Overgrown too, I guess. Then I can still trade with the first angel if we find white mana. Now I can play Ilharg next turn if I'm still alive. Alright, maybe they ran out of instants and sorceries. And now the plan is Ilharg putting in play Archangel, which lets us cast Ulamog. So just gonna survive one more turn. Arcanist is fine. So I'm probably not dead to the Kiln Fiend here. And they don't have a flying blocker to chum block the Archangel. Alright, so we get to untap. Let's move to combats.
And do we get to connect? We sure do. Say hello to my little friend Ulamog. And I probably should just get rid of their creatures here. Sprite Dragon and Kiln Fiends. Ranger Skull is going to give Hexproof. Kiln Fiend is gone. Alright, I could still be dead here if they can uh, play a bunch of pump spells on the Sprite Dragon. Don't have the white mana to cast Archangel. Cycling this is not going to do much. But alright, our opponent concedes, so I guess they must not have had the necessary pump spells in hand. But yeah, the Kiln Fiend deck typically plays a bunch of spells that can double a creature's power or give a double strike, so it's not inconceivable that a Sprite Dragon could kill me next turn. But luckily it didn't. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a decent looking hand. We're just missing the turn 3 Rhythm of the Wild for a turn 4 Ulamog. Opponent kept 5. And it's going to be a Bishop of Wings, so maybe an Angel Synergy deck. And that is kind of bad news, because that means they might have some flying blockers for the Archangel. Making it more difficult to connect. Alright, we'll just play Paradise Roots, and then... Do I play the Triome, or do I hold it to cycle? Maybe I can actually afford to cycle this one. Next turn we can play Angel. Although there's Resplendent Angel, which will generate a 4-4 token right away thanks to the 1 life from Soul Warden and the 4 life from Bishop. So, yeah, this is what we wanted to avoid. So we'll have an Archangel playing defense instead of putting in play Ulamog, which is a lot less exciting. So am I just going to try and ramp into Ulamog now? I guess so. We've got a Lantern for a bit of ramp too. But first I need to play Angel on defense. And then I'll just play the Triumph, I guess. So we've got 6 mana available for next turn. That's going to be plus 2. Up to 8, so we're getting close to an Ulamog. Opponent only has 3 mana, but it's going to be a second Resplendent Angel. Ouch. So two more Angel tokens coming the opponent's way. Opponent at 42 life. Make that 47. Yeah, I don't know how long this Archangel is going to keep us alive. Angel of Vitality. It's going to make two more Angel tokens. Yeah, even Ulamog's not going to save us anymore now. Yeah, that's the power of Bishop of Wings. Definitely the most important card in the Angel's deck. So we're at 11, Pwn gets two more 4-4 Angels. And uh, next turn I would have been able to cast Ulamog, but not fast enough. Maybe they play around Settle the Wreckage. Although now shall I even shuts that down, so they've got all answers covered here. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a keepable hand. We'll need a little bit of help, maybe drawing an extra land or a Rhythm of the Wilds or an Ulamog. Those are the types of cards we wouldn't mind seeing. Up 
opponent with Explore, so this could be a Field of the Dead deck, enjoying their last day in the sun. And then we can even Thrill End of Turn, discarding Chromatic Lantern. Migration Path. Alright, opponent's ramping nicely. There's Rhythm, but no Ulamogs to cheat in play. So what's my plan here? Do I just play Ilharg? Do I play Rhythm anyway? I guess if my opponent's gonna play a Sweeper, I would rather just have the Rhythm in play. I guess I should have attacked for two, since I'm not gonna need the Paradise Root anymore. Let's see if Rejuvenator finds Field. It does. Field of Ruin. Luckily, we've got plenty of basics in the deck. Alright, I guess it's time for Hasty Ilharg putting in play a Hasty Archangel. I guess my opponent can make another zombie with Field of Ruin, triple block Ilharg. Or I can just go for Hasty Archangel, put in play another Archangel. Hope they don't have a Sweeper. Yeah, maybe that's the reason to still play Ilharg here. Hasty Ilharg. And then put in play Archangel. With a counter. Opponent will Field of Ruin. Gets another zombie token. And then I can put the second Archangel in play, because the original one is going to go back to her hand end of turn. We'll put Ilharak third from the top. And play another Paradise Root, sure. So I've got a little bit of sweeper insurance by having one more angel in hand. Ideally just top deck an Ulamog next turn, so we can exile Feel of the Dead. Ugin the Spirit Dragon, ouch. Yeah, that's uh, probably just game over here. Can still play Archangel thanks to Lantern, but... I guess that's my best bet. Domri's actually not too bad, because that gives me a chance of finding an Ulamog. Hugin goes face. And a Shatter too. Alright. Yeah, Archangel was my best bet here. Can play Ilharg, I guess that's still my play. Play Ilharg, and then next turn I can minus Domri. But putting Ulamog in play with Ilharg doesn't actually accomplish much. If I play Domri and Minus, they just kill it with Ugin. If I plus, I guess it doesn't die. I get to play Paradise Druid with a counter. But then what's my plan for next turn? I don't know. I guess we'll see. Rejuvenator misses. Don't see that very often. And there's a Hornet Queen, which I can put in play with Ilharg. So that's kind of nifty. Hasty Ilharg. We'll send both at Ugin. Hornet Queen also goes after Ugin, I think. If 
They could have another growth spiral in hand to make a zombie at instant speed. Alright, Ugin down. Step one. Has never stopped me. Hopefully no second Ugin. They do have another shatter though. Uh, yeah, we'll take action. I do have a Domri at 7, so we're not too far from the emblem. Although the Rejuvenator is going to make some more zombies finding a second feel of the dead. Alright, Ulamog. The plot thickens. So I can cast a Hornet Queen, 5, 6, 7, by plussing with Domri. Yeah, let's just play Hornet Queen here. A little pick me up before the real fun begins. Zombie tokens versus insects. Ooh, wow. Top decked Kenrith. That was a good draw. So now they can give the zombies trample, take out my Domri, which was otherwise gonna ultimate. Although I don't even know if an ultimate from Domri really wins the game against Field of the Dead. Making a 4-4 trampling beast each turn doesn't really outpace making a million zombies per turn. Kenrith gets back Rejuvenator. Making two more zombies and now they can give everything haste and trample. So how many zombies is this? 6, make it 7, so 14, 19 power. And I have how much toughness? 7. So I'm actually exactly dead here, because my opponent tramples over. Well, that's unfortunate. It was actually a closer game than I thought it would be. All right, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. Facing Omori, the collector. Could be goblins. I mean, this hand's okay if we draw a bit of ramp, either a two-mana ramp creature or lantern. So we'll try. Alright, there's my ramp creature. So turn 3 Rhythm, turn 4 Hasty Ilharg. So best top deck here would be an Archangel, so I can go Hasty Ilharg, put in play Archangel and then cast Ulamog. Cycles Gem Palm. Alright. I guess it's probably game over. So I got a Thrill discarding Rhythm. Alright, maybe there's still a chance here now that we drew the Archangel. Can have Hasty Ilharg put in play Archangel, put in play Ulamog. Cranko without hastes. And uh, no thanks. And then Ulamog can exile Krenko plus Lance. I guess I should maybe cycle the Triome. Alright. Let's see what they can 
come up with here. Another mountain on top. They do have the backup Cranko, so it's not over yet. So let's cycle Triome. Alright, opponent concedes. Yeah, I mean, we were going to be attacking with Ilharg, Ulamog, putting in another Archangel, which is going to hit them for 6. So they would probably have to block with the Krenko just to stay alive. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? If we find some ramp, it's actually not terrible, because then Ilhar can put in play Hornet Queen, leave behind some Hornet tokens. Sure, let's try it. So ideally draw either a 2-mana ramp creature by turn 2, or a Chromatic Lantern by turn 3. Ulamog is interesting. I think I might have to thrill discarding the other thrill. Or I can get rid of one of the payoffs. Maybe ditch Ulamog, since we have Hornet Queen, to go with Ilharg. There's my Chromatic Lantern. So we are potentially looking at a turn for Ilharg, although without haste. Alright, there's my haste. So we'll play Rhythm, and then probably thrill away the Triome. And if they're holding on to any counter spells, they're no longer going to work on our creatures. Erebos' intervention, exiling some cards. Alright, so they probably think I'm a reanimator deck. Makes sense. Narsets in response will thrill. And then I can send a 3 3 Hornet Queen at Narset and Ilharg at the opponent's face. Could also go for Incubation Druid with Hastes and then. Still uh, play Ilharg. I guess that's fine. Leave behind some tokens. And then I can also replay the Hornet Queen without needing Ilharg. This is overwhelming. Alright, opponent's got a Nicol Bolas in hand. Although no triple black. Gives us a GG. Alright, good game. So we got to see a bit of Hornet Queen in action too here. So overall, our deck is pretty janky, don't expect it to be competitive, but uh, definitely a lot of fun if you do get to get those good draws with Archangel putting in play Ulamog. can definitely catch the opponent off guard, and that's the best feeling. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.